seven in my pocket I am a healing prophet Sees a promise in my garden I need to have a soft and sexual experience so I'm about to provide you guys with a complete list of all the tools that you'll need to start the process of growing mushrooms in the next 96 hours. The majority of the items that I list off in this video are available on Amazon with one to two day shipping options. I've divided the list of tools that you'll need into categories with respect to their priority level and the role that they play in the overall process of growing mushrooms. So let's quickly run down the different categories of tools that you'll need. The first category is tools that you'll need to properly perform sterile procedures or sterile tech. Second is tools that you'll need for your agar work. Third is a trusted source for quality genetics. Now, 5 a.m., why would you tell us that we need tools to properly perform sterile tech and the things that we need to work on agar before we get our genetics? Don't hurt me. I'm telling you that because once you get your genetics and you already have the things that you need to properly practice sterile tech and you have what you need to begin working on agar, you could just commit those genetics, whether they be cultural slants, spores, or genetic isolations, you could just commit that to agar and there won't be any breaks in your flow. I'm trying to help you out. The fourth category consists of tools that are necessary for mycelial expansion. So after we've committed our genetics to agar, everything is grown out easy peasy, no contamination anywhere, now we want to choose a grain to expand our mycelium on. The fifth category consists of ingredients for your bulk substrates. And the sixth and final category of items or tools that you guys would need is for mushroom fruiting. You can grow out of all-in-one bags. I personally use all-in-one bags when I'm testing out genetics before I give them a full run inside of a 50 or 60 quart model tub. You can grow out of trays. Trays are useful when you are growing wood-loving exotic species like zaps or pans. My advanced people know what I'm talking about when I say that. But if you are growing dung-loving species, the preferred method, at least according to me, is going to be growing out of a monotub. So let's go ahead and get into the items that you'll need for sterile procedures. This is a very high priority category, so I recommend that you guys place your resources first and foremost in obtaining these four items. First up on the list is a HEPA filter. HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air, and what this piece of equipment does is removes airborne contaminants from your workspace so that you can knock up grain and agar plates with a reduced chance of contamination. Two things to consider before going online and purchasing a HEPA filter is that it is able to remove particles in your air down to 0.3 microns. The other thing to consider is that it must have low airflow, high resistance characteristics. You guys have it so much easier than I had it 10 years ago because I had to go and purchase a filter separately from a blower, then go to Home Depot and cut out wood that fit the size of the blower and the filter, and I had to put it together myself. All you guys have to do now is go onto Amazon, type in HEPA filter with the word mycology behind it, and it's going to bring up search results for items that are great for you to work with. The very next tool that's important in sterile procedures is what I have here. This is a infrared sterilizer. So gone are the days that we're sitting in front of a flow hood with a torch lighter or burning a wick. 
trying to flame sterilize our inoculation tools. All you have to do is insert your scalpel or whatever inoculation tool that you are using at the time inside of the opening of this sterilizer and it does all of the sterilization for you. Next up on this very high priority list is a pressure cooker. Pressure cookers are absolutely essential because without the use of a pressure cooker, you cannot properly sterilize grain and agar media. I recommend a pressure cooker by a company called Presto's. This is a 23 quart, 15 PSI pressure cooker. They are really cheap and affordable, cost you about $80, and they work for a long time. And last but not least, the fourth and final tool that you'll need for sterile procedures is, of course, a scalpel. Scalpels are important because they are involved in the vast majority of work that you do on agar. In the beginning, I would get two or three scalpels and use them interchangeably. And let's say that you get some quality spores and you go to inoculate those spores on agar mycelium results from that what you want to be able to do is identify the parts of the mycelium that has grown out the fastest and is of course the most vigorous and use your scalpel to take cuttings or samples of those pieces of mycelium and transfer them over to new agar plates the second high priority category of tools are related to agar work. I have a two-part series up on the channel right now going over in detail on how to put together your very own agar media and it lists all of the tools that you'll need to be able to do that. But if you guys are not comfortable yet putting together your own agar media, I would recommend that you go to Amazon. There are many trusted vendors on Amazon that sell quality pre-poured sterilized agar plates, and I will link below to some of those vendors. So let's talk high quality genetics or spores. This is the third high priority category, and it is very, very important. Guys, there's a lot that I can say that is negative about the current state of genetics that are being sold and passed around on the internet. But I'm gonna go with what my grandmama used to tell me back in the day, which is if you don't have much positive to say, then you probably shouldn't be saying it at all. On top of that, I'm not 100% sure that YouTube doesn't have it out for content creators that post links to sites that they may not be particularly fond of. So what I've done to play it safe is create an Instagram account so that we can talk privately about what my vendor recommendations are in terms of spores and genetics. Now let's talk mycelial expansion and all of the things that you'll need for that. I am not going to designate mycelial expansion as a high priority category of tools that you'll need for the simple reason that if you don't get all of the tools in the first three categories, you cannot possibly get to this particular stage in the process of growing mushrooms. Mycelium expansion is simply characterized by choosing a grain to expand your mycelium on. There's a video up on the channel right now where I go over using the wild bird seed tech, how to prepare your grains properly for mycelium expansion. And all of the tools that you'll need to be able to successfully expand your mycelium is also listed one by one in that video. All right, so if you have your materials for sterile tech, if you have your materials for agar work, you've picked out quality genetics or spores, and you've expanded your mycelium on grain, now you are ready for the final category of tools to be purchased. These tools are related to mushroom fruiting. My very first recommendation of items to buy off of this list is going to be two 50 to 60 quart sterilite bins. 
the tools that you'll need to properly customize your 50 to 60 quart Sterilite bins and turn them into monotub fruiting chambers is something that I am going to discuss in more detail on my Patreon. The next item that is important to mushroom fruiting is of course manure. Now, my recommendation on manure is that you use horse manure. Why? Because horse manure is less fibrous than cow manure. And in the past, I've gotten faster bulk substrate colonization by using horse manure over cow manure. Now, horse manure is something that is typically free, especially if you live in rural areas and you are polite enough to go and ask the owners of those livestock, is it okay for you to go out and collect manure, whether it be at a stable or at a farm? But if you guys are not so fortunate to live in areas where there are horses or there are stables, then the next best thing to do is to go onto Amazon and order your manure off of Amazon. Now, the next two items that are important to mushroom fruiting is going to be vermiculite and cocoa core. Both of these items you can get on Amazon and I guarantee you, you can get it within two to three days, probably even faster than that. The number one thing to note about vermiculite and cocoa core is that vermiculite absorbs water within your bulk substrate and cocoa core retains water within your bulk substrate. And the last two items that is going to be important in the fruiting phase and the construction of your bulk substrates is going to be earthworm castings and gypsum. Gypsum is very beneficial to mycelium and earthworm castings is very rich in nitrogen along with a whole bunch of other things. It even helps balance the pH in your bulk substrates. We have went over the tools that you'll need for sterile tech. We've gone over how to put together your own agar media. I even went over how you guys can connect with me and I can give you my recommendations for spore and genetic vendors. We've covered mycelial expansion and the things that you'll need to be able to do that and everything that you would need for the final fruiting stage of your mycelium. Now, if you guys want to know how to use each and every single one of these items from the start of the process all the way to the end of the process of growing mushrooms, sign up to the Patreon and I'll show you guys exactly what to do step by step.